Today, I'm going to review some more products from the Birmingham Pen Company. They sent me a very nice box full of products. And unfortunately, when I first started to make this video, uh, I did an unboxing. However, it turns out when I recorded some more of the, the material, it overrode the unboxing portion. So instead of unboxing, I will show you what was in the box and then we will move on to actually testing the colors. So what I received in terms of extras in the box included a postcard that says the Birmingham Pen Company. It's a very nice postcard, as well as another postcard that shows a scene of Pittsburgh, an old sort of old fashioned looking scene. And uh, this is from, it says from the uh, looking at downtown from the North Shore of Pittsburgh, which I thought was a very nice thing to include. Also, there's a thank you card that says, thank you for the privilege to prepare this package for you today. Our goal is to earn your business as a customer for life. Your complete, outright, and unrelenting satisfaction is guaranteed. We've got your back. And then there's some more information with their uh, website and how to get hold of them on the back. Now, the colors that I ended up getting uh, include, you know, last time I ended up getting a couple of blues that were very close in color. So this time I tried to do something different. So one color I picked out was pop art purple. That's very different from blue. Then I have Tesla Coil, which from the, the pictures on the website uh, is blue, but it has a lot of an electric kind of color. So it, it looks like a, it would be an interesting color. Then I have Psychedelic Magenta, you know, a pink kind of color. Then I ended up with some small bottles of colors that I think are kind of unexpected. So I have Pennsylvania Slate, Kentucky Bluegrass, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Field Stone, and Ohio River. So those will be the colors that I will be testing. And so we're now going to head over to my workspace. See you there. Okay, now here I have my workspace and what I'm going to do is test out each one of these colors um, on this uh, sketchbook. Uh, that it's an Arches Arches uh, sketch sketchbook, uh, one hundred forty pound cold press um, travel journal. So I think this is about the right size for testing out these different colors. And I'm just basically going to swatch them and then try out some various effects, such as putting down some salt uh, and maybe spray with them some alcohol because uh, from my past experience, spraying inks with alcohol can create very interesting effects. So I'm going to start with this first one over here, the Tesla coil, because I'm kind of excited about how this one might look. So I'm going to give it a good shake, the bottle. And I'm going to use um, number uh, 10 silver black velvet round. Just get a little bit wet. Dip it in. It goes down really blue. Goes up the top. Let's see what happens if I add more water. Moving it along. Even more water. So letting it do whatever it's going to do. It's a nice, you know, color, and it stays very dark at the top, 
where I haven't added extra water. And it's making some very nice colors there. So I'm going to put a little bit of salt on that one. So we'll put that one aside. Let's try something that will very much uh, contrast. Um, how about the psychedelic magenta? Shake it up a little bit. My brush. And we'll go down this way. It's nice pink. It's almost like an opera pink. And so, let's see what happens when it moves. It seems to pretty much stay the same color. So it behaves a bit differently. Let's see what happens if I spray the pink, the magenta, with a little bit of the um, alcohol solution. It makes a nice spreading pattern. And if I put a little bit of salt on, on it, we'll see what happens. Now, while those two pieces are drying. Let's see if I can switch to a different page without messing things up. Okay, so, so slide over and we have another page here. So let's see what next color we should use. How about the pop art purple? Actually maybe I think I could put the pop art purple on the same page. We have a bit more space here. Because, you know, purple and pink go together. Try my brush a bit more. Oh, this is interesting. It starts out sort of a blue, dark blue-gray. But it looks like as it dries, it becomes a bit more purple. Let's see what happens when I add a bit more water to it. That's interesting. It turns into sort of a bluey color, even though it's still pretty much purple over there. Let's see what happens if I bring it into the magenta. There's, there is definitely some blue in this purple, but then, you know, purple's red and blue. So this looks like a, a fun color to play with. Let's see what happens if we do a little bit of spray, spritz. And maybe a little teeny bit of salt. Okay, now I will move to the next page. Over. Let me make sure everybody can see it. Okay, so we're finished with the big bottles. Now we're going on to the little bottles. So let's start with the Kentucky Bluegrass. This should be interesting. I would assume it's a, a green. Get my brush clean. 
Oh, that's a pretty green. That's sort of a dark green. Which can fade, seems to fade out into a lighter green. Which would be good for foliage and things like that. Okay, now let's try the Pennsylvania Slate. I'm not sure what this would, will look like. Slate is usually a gray kind of color. Oh, it's a blue. I know there is what's called bluestone in this area, so maybe that's what this is somewhat reminiscent of. And maybe it will dry a more gray color. We'll have to see, because I don't know. So pull it down a bit. Let's see. We'll do a little bit of testing here. Sprinkle the salt. If some of you have seen some of my work, you know I like texture. And so one of the good, easiest ways to get some texture is with some salt. Okay, now we're going to do Ohio River. Now, I live pretty close to the Ohio River and it ranges in all sorts of different colors depending on where you are and whether you're near the shore or in the middle of the river. So let's see. This is also another kind of blue. It's maybe less green. It's kind of hard to tell. Yes, I think the slate one is a greener blue heading more towards teal. I think I'll add in some more water. There is a, is a subtle amount of difference. And you can blend the edges to get it to blend it together. And then our last one is the Pennsylvania Field Stone. I have no idea what that color will be. Let's see. Oh, this is definitely a gray. So it has a pink undertone. Very much good for making walls and things like that. That's kind of pretty. Yeah. Very much kind of rocks that you see around in this area. My brush clean. If you wipe it and you pull it down, you get more of a gray, but then there's this pink, this cool pink color underneath. So I could see being able to use this to blend into different kinds of uh, landscape. Sort of a, looking at different kinds of bricks. Okay, so at this point in time, I'm going to spritz with a little bit of the alcohol, and it doesn't seem to do much to the uh, these two, the um, Pennsylvania Slate and the Ohio River, although it does a lot of change to the Fieldstone, which is pretty cool in my mind. Let's see what it does on the green. Uh, it doesn't do too much to the green, maybe a little bit. So I think that's a really interesting effect. 
Um, so we're just going to now let these all dry and come back and see what they look like when they're dry. So see you in a bit. Okay, we are back now. The ink has all dried. So we can look at the colors and how things behaved. Okay, now if we look at um, the Tesla color, uh, it didn't, the salt didn't do much to it, but if we look at the color, you can see it stayed very dark. And then as I added more water, the, it turned into a nice sort of, um, uh, blue with a bit of green in it. So I can see this as being useful for, for, uh, water colors, you know, making water in, in color. Now, with the purple over here, there is some effect from the salt, and the purple turns into almost a uh, sort of slate blue, um, but it's definitely purple in the uh, here in the middle, and as it mixed in with the magenta, and the magenta, the, the, the salt seemed to take a bit, and these are the places where I sprayed the alcohol and it definitely pushed the ink to the side. So uh, one can get some texture effect using salt with the magenta. Now we'll look at the other side and the green, it just stayed pretty much a nice green. Before it seemed to be have a bit more blue in it, but in terms of color coloration, it's a very dark uh, rich green that then seems to have a little bit of yellow with the, with more water. Now this was the Pennsylvania Slate, which um, the salt didn't do too much, but it goes from a uh, sort of, I guess, sort of bluestone color of uh, blue, and it changes into a sort of teal but it's a different kind of teal than this other one which is the ohio river which does look kind of like um, one might see in the, the the deepest parts of the river would be like that um, and the salt didn't do much there either on the other hand here where we had um what, what was it called let me see the field stone, we had had a lot of effect by the salt, and this is where I sprayed the alcohol water, and it, it pushed the color away. And you can see we have the have sort of a greenish, and then pink and gray, and then it separates out into a very light uh, green with a little bit of blue in it. So those are the effects that we we see here. When I tested colors previously, I did it on mineral paper. And if you remember, the mineral paper, when it had the ink put on to it and then the salt, the salt actually bonded to the mineral paper. And so it caused a different sort of effect. And so that's something to think about too, is the kind of surface you are using these products on. So again, you can see how the products worked given the testing that I did. So I'll go back to the other uh, location and we will finish up. Well, we have now looked at the products that I received from the Birmingham Pen Company and I've tested them out. So it's up to you to decide if these look like products that would be useful to you. I found some, some stunning examples of how some of the products can really work for my my art and some that i might use sparingly but i can see places for them so if this has been a useful video for you please give it a thumbs up and think about subscribing and sharing this video with other artists who might find this information to be useful and if you so desire you can help support me in my purchasing of various uh, items for me to test and to share with you. If you go over to my Patreon uh, site, it's just 
a small amount of money per month will help me continue to give give you reviews of various kinds of products that are out there that can help you in your artist's journey. So see you next time. Bye.